Welcome back to HTC Recharged. We are on the final match of the day. We got Nuguri versus Forsen. Forsen is the returning champion. You guys probably know uh, all the things that he's about to uh, play, all the things he's about to do in this match, but uh, not too much is known about Nuguri. And uh, Nimshir had a few moments to ask him a few things, and uh, maybe, maybe you can share some of this insight. What you got for us? All right, so um, I know that he is a magic player uh, from South Korea, um, and uh, he qualified. I, I'm not. I'm not sure from which qualifier he actually qualified because he had. We had EU and NA, and mm -hmm. he qualified from South Korea. But uh, he's playing on all the free regions as most of the pros, and uh, he loves the to play best decks. And uh, we can see it in his lineup right now: Hunter, Warlock, Warrior. So not really a specific class is being liked. He just likes what's good. Mm -hmm. His favorite card is Gromash Hellscream. So maybe we'll see, if this is a patron list, maybe we'll see Gramash. Uh, and uh, basically he, he was around, he was playing qualifiers, playing from open beta, he loves Horde. Yep. Yeah. He's actually posing for a Horde shirt in this uh, image that we got, but uh, we'll probably get him on cam uh, when the game actually starts, but we'll see. Uh, pretty good stuff though. Uh, so we do have the standard lineup from Nagori, as you mentioned, the, the Hunter Warlock Warrior. Forsen's bringing in a little bit of flavor. He's not playing Warrior. He has the Hunter and Warlock the same, but he has the Mage instead of uh, the Warrior. And I think Forsen is one of those players that uh, almost almost every single time we see him bring Mage, he does bring the Freeze. Have you yeah. seen any exception to that? Uh, yeah, I've lost HTC 1. He went, I think, with Mech Mage, Mech Shaman. Oh. So, like, really aggressive lineup. But if you would ask me what Mage is Forsen playing, I would say Freeze Mage as well. Like, the, the famous... Mm -hmm. Frostbolt into Mad Scientist, Force and Play, uh, yeah. on him versus RDU. So I, I do consider um, Force and a, a mage player. All right, well, we are here in game one. Uh, we see what seems to be uh, a Grim Patron Warrior up against Forsen's Mage. We don't see his cards quite yet. Opening with Mad Scientist doesn't give us too much information, but we will see. Yeah, it seems like Freeze Mage to me with Ice Barrier, Frost Nova, and Ice Block. Now the big question is, how does this deck fare versus the, the Green Patron? I think this is one of those things that people are actually um, pretty... Uh, like, they're quite agreeable on the fact that these decks do go pretty back and forth. These decks are both, like, pretty infuriating to play, and it's just it's pretty close to 50-50. Sometimes the Green Patron sneaks in the win, sometimes it doesn't. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree that it seems like a 50-50. It really depends on a couple of things. Uh, Freeze Mage, mostly... All right, so for the strategy for Warrior is, as usual, gain a lot of armor. What Patron can do is try to accumulate, try to draw into double armor smith, then just put five more minions on board and get one or two whirlwind effects. To just get loads of armor and keep that on board. And uh, if that happens, what Mage has to do is to get Antonidas and Torison and just get cards cheaper so that he gets a lot of fireballs and has enough burst to go for that armor. And those yeah. are like the key points that really um, weave the matchup. Well, right now the mage has more armor than the warrior and that's probably gonna be the case for several turns. That's certainly true. Uh, no armor smith for Nugori yet at least. Okay. The war song as well, it's so weird that th those players are not getting war songs. Oh, the ghoul here? <laughs> Doesn't seem like a best play. I think I'd go with an Acolyte. You do have two. I guess the problem is that you can get milled, but... Like, that would basically waste the mage's entire turn. So that's fine in my book. How many cards yeah. is there? Six, eight... Yeah, it's got yeah. eight, so he can ping and do some form of damage to it, which would result in one card being milled, but... Like, it seems like an overcommitment on six mana to want to do that. I agree. Doesn't seem that good. You might want to Frostbolt once, though. No, I don't I don't think that actually, at this point, drawing cards from Acolyte matters that much to, to Forsen. Like, would you Frostbolt Acolyte, or would you like to keep Frostbolt as a burst card? Because Warrior is at full hand anyway. Mm-hmm. All right. Puts up the second Ice Barrier, gain even more armor, and passes the turnover to Naguri. 
Yeah, Forsen just wants to buy time. And uh, he is getting the time. He needs to, he needs to draw and time and get, get into that Taurus and get into Antonidas. And if Nogori is actually not getting enough armor, if he never got, uh, gets those armor smiths, maybe Forsan will be able to win the usual way. Just mm -hmm. have that ice block on, on that, play Alex Traz on 9, and then follow up with Burst on 10, maybe 11 to finish finish everything. There's the game. Well, we see the Gromash from Nogori. We see um, Emperor Thorsten hit on a few combo cards. Oh, seems pretty good. I feel like the the mage got a, a really nice buffer on the turns by uh, stacking up that armor and keeping the warrior busy with the few early game creatures. But I feel like the warrior also has advantages this game with the um, with the card draw and the uh, the discounts on those cards he's gotten through Thorson. Yeah, it definitely definitely looks decent for for the warrior for now. He got that armor smith as well. Not that he is getting a lot of armor yet, but. It, it looks decent. Also the Gromash that we talked about, this is his favorite card. Usually people don't run Gromash, like some decks do, but then Nugori decided to, to run one. That's actually a lot of damage from Gromash if he needs it in the future. Damage that Forsen might not expect. Yeah, it's quite a bit from a bunch of fairly irrelevant creatures, so it's fairly good use of that. Uh, Casting any kind of uh, clear here will result in uh, a mill as well. It's not too bad. It just gives him a lot of armor, which is not that nice. Forsen doesn't have that much burst in hand, but other than that, it looks like a good Frost Nova. Maybe, do you maybe draw? You have six, seven, eight cards. You want to draw some more burst, because at this point, it looks like you can Alex Stras on nine. And get warrior really low. Well, not anymore. No, well, the blizzard for three happens. Uh, gives the warrior another five armor. Uh, mills the warrior one card. Uh, is that card gonna be? Yeah, it is gonna be Grim Patron. <laughs> okay, not too relevant, but um, yeah, we'll see. If, if that will actually hit the second armor smith, that will be relevant. Also, I wonder which version Nogori is playing, but I doubt he's uh, running any shield blocks here. Mm -hmm. When you go Gramash, you, you just cut those cards. Alright, so... Uh, not really much to do. Yeah. Well, you have a free Whirlwind. So you can just do a Grim Patron combo for damage. Is that really worth it though? Well, we need to get Mage lower at some point, but it might it might be at the time as well. You also can get some armor with this. It's uh, four points of armor at this point. Maybe even play the Ghoul. Yeah, the Ghoul would have been one more armor, but... Um... I don't know if I like it too much otherwise. Oh, he didn't attack with all the, the minions. Force him with his BM. Well, he missed... Did he, did he miss the original one? Oh no, the original one hit the creature, so he missed 6 damage there. Yeah, he missed 2 attacks. Well, definitely stress playing versus Force on. Uh Forsen is a formidable opponent. We talked about him uh, before in the beginning of the show. He's the winner of the previous version. Competitive from the very beginning. Sometimes he role plays, but most of the time he plays so much Hearthstone that he knows the meta game and he knows how to play those difficult decks. That's right. Man, if he had six more damage, he could probably proc the Ice Block next turn with the Ghoul and a Gromash if he gets Alistraza. But I don't think he's going to get Alistraza the more I look at this board. Well, he doesn't really have enough bursts to go for all the armor, so he needs to draw into Antonidas and Torison. That might be the, the best course of action. Because we're looking at 14 points of armor. 
Like, even with Alexstrasza, it's around 30 points of health. Mm -hmm. You could draw a lot of cards here. If you want. Is there... Hmm. Yeah, you slam your own Grim Patron, you run the new one into the Acolyte, and then you mill yourself. I'm thinking, like, because of a Frolling, Frolling is also nice, he might get a lot of damage there. Can he pop the block with this? That's a very good question, right? Yeah. Well, um, he is definitely uh, using that goal. He will get one more patron here. Or is it two patrons? Now it's one more because there was only space for one. Yeah. Might not be able to attack again. Taking too much time to think. Alright, so he's just going to deal damage with this. Well, that's a lot of damage, actually, out of nowhere. And there is Grimash waiting as well. Mm -hmm. But Force and Skirt? Force actually got all the car combo cards he needed. But can he use Does them? Does he have enough time? He has to clear this. Okay, hey, the blizzard blizzard is effective here. We run into that issue that I was uh, mentioning earlier. Like here, if he pings the last three three, it doesn't spawn another one, and then blizzard actually clears. Yeah, that's pretty pretty smart. Using the um, the minion cap to actually clear. And then the frolling will survive, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's frozen. I mean, if you want to silence a one health frolling, that's fine. Okay, pretty smart thing. That's something that people can learn from those tournaments. Those are the, yeah. the pro plays. There we go. Lizard clear. Just above. Yeah, with this Not he might exactly, actually have but just above. With this he might actually have enough time to apply the Antonidas. What will be the order though? You play Antonidas first, and then you like Antonidas Nova. And then you try to get as many fireballs as possible, and then you drop Torisan. Hmm. Well, the real question is, what do you do here? I believe you might want to pop the block. I feel the whirlwind is bad, though. You don't want to proc it at eight. And remember that six damage missed. <laughs> yeah, that would be a two. Well, not only would it be a two, but he wouldn't have to use Whirlwind. True. But basically having him lower would be better. Hmm. Also, the fun effect is that Nugori is actually undamaged, so battle rage value is much lower. He's also got pretty few cards in the deck. I think the Freeze Mage has even fewer, though. Forsen right now is uh, just trying to be creative and realize how he can win this game. Um, usually with Freeze Mage, you're playing the survival game and then just trying to get like a two-turn combo lethal. But the problem is when your opponent has 16 armor, that's generally not possible. Yeah, Forsen might actually go for the War of Attrition, kind of. If he survives, then if Warrior runs out of, runs out of cards. But on the other hand, like if Forsen starts taking fatigue damage, that's something that Iceberg will not stop. He has one heal bot, but that might, might not be enough. Doomsayer heal bot. Just heal himself up and be able to clear the board. Uh, there is an execute though. What will be the point of the of the ghoul? Oh, battle rage, sure. Yeah, he is running a bit low on cards and he has two battle rages. Okay, that's still a lot of good card draw. Execute the Doomsayer, you'll have the Grimash on board. I think you play the Armorsmith here as well. Because be if that board is clear, you're gonna get some more armor. Armor is exactly what you need. The thing is with those draws now, Forsen might actually be able to win an attrition game. Because I think he is finally 
behind on the draws as a freeze mage. What do you think about Antonidas ice lancing Gromash here? Or do you fear an hour execute so you might actually go for with hmm. No, that if there is a second execute, and you should assume there is a second execute because no, uh, Nogori actually drew into his whole deck, you might not want to risk Antonidas. Mm -hmm. So maybe just Torison actually. Torison ice block or something. Yeah, or Torison frostbolt into Gromash, or maybe you even can kill Gromash. Frostbolt Icelands. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. But again, it also depends how many cards uh, Forsen has in his deck, because Arcane Intellect will turn to Fireballs, but might bring him closer to Fatigue. Okay. I like this play. I like any play that doesn't involve um, Arcane Intellect, because I think if you draw any more cards from this point, you kind of risk the situation of just not being able to... Uh, uh, win it all. I agree. And uh, also keeping Frostbolt on Iceland means that you will be able to turn them into Fireballs. Mm -hmm. Can you pop the block here? If you go frotting. That's... Um... The real question is uh, can you do it well enough so that the Death Spite alone becomes lethal? So that will be plus seven. Yes. So it's nine points of damage. It's if no, you... plus eight. It's plus. Yeah, you can do it well seven. enough. Basically, enrage the the, the armor smith. Mm, you attack. F okay, that's still fine. Like if you enrage the frolling, that would be a mistake. Yeah. Okay. Force and in trouble, whole board of minions. Well, he's got Alistraza, but um, well, no, I think he's okay actually. Wait, no, 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 he's not okay. He needs to, he needs to clear. And he needs to basically weapon. stall a turn, Alistraza next turn. So how, how does that happen? I don't see a way to deal with the board and the weapon at the same time. And if you play if you play Alexstrasza, you Alexstrasza yourself, and then you kill the frotting, freeze the the ten six. Oh, the fireball! Um... Nope. <laughs> yeah, you're still dead. You're dead to War Song. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, just the War Song kills you, I believe. You've already exhausted your secret options. Well, the rope is going, so... You like Strasse yourself, you're dead on board. So much, yeah. Mm, no, you're not dead on board. Because the ice lance costs zero. Okay, okay. So it's like 10 plus 4. Yeah, but like, how do you win? Yeah, there is an execute as well. Actually, so just all face. He might want to kill extras, actually, but uh, then seems like a mistake, right? Like he could actually go all face and execute, as you said, and now he's missing damage. And you want to attack with the weapon because you have a second weapon in your hand, and that's all you got. Why didn't he attack with the weapon? I have no idea. And now Forsen can actually fireball the ten six. Hmm. Oh, flame strike is, is better than, than frost. It's okay. Bolt. Yeah, it never really gets any more value. So. I'm just gonna throw away the doomsayer just in case there's another creature, I believe. Which again seems pretty fair. There's, there's, there's no other creature. But it seems like it might be over. Still, what what does Forsen have? Is there like an ice barrier still in the deck? Will it buy him enough time? Because Nugori has. Is. He has Antonidas, but. Might not be able to to win because there is ten points of damage incoming from Nugori. 
And if Forsen starts taking fatigue damage, he will just die. Okay. If he would attack last turn, this turn Forsen will be at 5. What's the last card? Frostbolt. So it will buy him one turn? Yeah. Oh man, this is... Can, can we count this? Do you see how much damage is that? If you frost, if you fireball, it's three turns with the fatigue. Three turns, twelve. It's it's around sixty, actually. I think it's really close. Okay, if Forsen takes three times the fatigue, he's dead because there will be one weapon swing. Actually, this turn he will take what yeah. damage? So he takes uh, one. one. He'll, be to, he'll be down to seven. Then a weapon hit. He'll be down to three. He takes two. And then he's dead. So basically, Forsen has two more turns. Can he produce enough damage? I yeah, mean, I this think turn, so. This, this turn and another turn. Another turn, he's alive. So basically, another turn, he'll have. To no, I think Forsen won. He's dead next turn. So this oh, turn no, he's he dead next turn. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he so can't count. No, he needs one extra turn. Okay, my bad, my bad. Yeah. Wow. Like, if you have two more turns, then definitely, yeah. Yeah. Oh man, this game, down to fatigue. That was pretty impressive. I think though, if if Nogori actually got the double attack in with the Grim Patron, it wouldn't have been close at all. <laughs> That's true. Because because Forsen was like staying alive very marginally on just a few health points on several turns. And because he, he didn't attack with the Grim Patron, Nogori had to use a bonus Whirlwind. He had to use like a bonus Inner Rage on the Armor Smith. You know, it's so many suboptimal plays as a result, which really shows like, you know, this deck is overpowered, but even at the highest level of play, it's so difficult to get it right to actually show that it actually is so powerful. Yeah. I certainly agree with that. But then it really has everything. It has the charge, it has um, the life gain. Mm -hmm. So, because Nogori was able to gain so much armor, that won him the game. Forsen was not able to plow for all that armor. Yeah. All right. Well, never lucky, boys. Never lucky. Forsen uh, still has to win. He still has to win with all three of his decks. Nogori has uh, Warlock and Hunter remaining. Uh, apparently, he is the, the best dex type of player, as you mentioned. Uh, what does that include for Warlock, then? What is the best Warlock deck right now, in your opinion? I think Zoo is really powerful. and mm. um, But then Zoo is getting countered by Green Patron. So... I think all the decks are on the same level, more or less. It depends like what, you're, what you expect, because they have different matchups. Um, Handlock Zoo might be on par. Maligos Warlock... It's a bit worse, but then if you expect your opponent to play Handlock and Patron, you might actually bring Maligos and have a good matchup. Mm -hmm. All right, well, it looks like a fairly standard Hunter. Uh, I like the Glaive Zuka. I think the one of Glaive Zuka has kind of trailed in almost every single Hunter deck, so I don't think that's too revealing. Um, and we are up against Forsen's Freeze Mage once again. I have to say, I don't... I don't really care who wins or loses, uh, but I really love to see one player play Freeze Mage, so I'm glad Forsen is doing it. Bring yeah, us the entertainment. Seen, we've seen a lot of Freeze Mages actually in this tournament. Yep. And uh, especially Forsen is an excellent player. He almost got that game. Yeah, it was really it was one turn off. So. Almost. And I think if he had some more flexibility with Alastraza, uh, he would have got it as well. But I mean, I think the, yeah, we talked about it. The only reason he had any options at all is because Nuguri misplayed a little bit. That's true. So, what do you think about Doomsayer on turn 2? It's kind of like a proactive play against um, against the aggressive decks, but it feels bad it versus Hunter Creeper. It feels bad, man, yeah. Is this Face Hunter? I, it be. seems so. Double, double Sergeant. Yeah, with Glaive Zuka and a double abuser, definitely, I think this is the phase one. Normally you play, in midrange you play only one. Mm -hmm. And uh, that deck, do you think face is better versus freeze mage, or is midrange better? Mm. 
mid range is obviously better if it gets the better draw, but I think face with the chargers removes so many options from the mage. Yeah, like so either the mage has the removal to deal with the early aggression. Uh, if he has it, it's all right. If he doesn't, he just dies. Very nice sequencing there from Nuguri. Not letting force and draw any more cards. Denying card draw is very important at the start of the game because it leads into more card draw. Where if you starve it, if you minimize the draw at the start, it might be a game where uh, your opponent may just not be able to draw much of his deck. Also, this force is uh, forced into clear a board some, somewhat. Because he's taking so much damage that he can't allow the board to exist. Okay. And Nardly Zuka, definitely face. Yeah, with that draw, you have to go for it. Forsen doesn't have any more freezes at this point, and no Blizzard. He has a Doomsayer. The Wolf Doomsayer, has... yeah, if you if you ping the 2-1, it doesn't die to the board. That seems reasonable. Okay, there is actually a Blizzard and Flamestrike. So now he might go for the Doomsayer. It tanks so much damage, and then you have the follow-up with Blizzard and Flamestrike. But that's oh seven high mains, so it might be a hybrid version. A lot of aggression mm -hmm. into high mains. I think here we might see like a re glaive Zuka, and then abusive sergeant, and then hero power. Just like literally max aggression. This is five six, seven eight, plus two, ten points of damage actually. So, if there is no Icebook on turn 6, Force is dead. Wow. It's forcing an Ice Block. But even if, if he plays Ice Block, then he just yes. pops the block. Yeah, he pops the block to the board. Well, that's, uh, that's tough for Forsen. Four points of health. There is a Glaive Zook on board. There is a Quick Shot. What does Forsen actually need? Like a life gain? I don't know what the draw was, but it was a secret. Uh, I don't know if it was Ice Block or Ice Barrier. Ice Barrier is a good one to get. Oh, this actually plays around Ice Barrier. Uh, th this is, yeah, but this is uh, Ice Barrier. He played the Ice Barrier from hand. No, it's Ice Block, yeah. Uh, ice Block, yeah, Ice Block, sorry. And the Pesky Leper Gnome. <laughs> Oh man, on the back of the leper now. Forsen is just. Oh, that's just... barrier and block. But still, like. Hero power that is. Just yeah, that gives you one turn. You'd basically have to get Healbot next turn and Alistraza the turn after that. You need to sequence two perfect draws with like 20 cards in the deck to have a chance, not, not to win, to like continue playing. Just to survive. Yeah, just to survive. So, very unlikely here. Forsen's options have been like so limited with the decks Nugori uh, brought to the table here. Well, Nugori had a, a pretty good matchup with this and a pretty good start as well. Really aggressive. Glazuka's packed a lot of damage. Yeah, Forsen's taking his time, but there is nothing really. Just double secret, pass. Okay, he's doing the force and play. He's trying to draw into something with Thalmas being. Okay. Okay, so the block is getting popped. Yeah, best to do nothing here. This is okay, this is not a heal bot, so. Nope. Can he draw this new bot? He has to get the heal bot this turn. Very good plays from Forsen. Um, setting up so both turns he can make the uh, the ping own creature play. Try to maximize his odds of getting those exact two draws that he needed. But he doesn't get either. So he uh, is on the verge of getting knocked out as the defending champion here. It's pretty tough. You come as a winner. As a
defeated by those two decks. Uh, still, Warlock is one of the, the strongest decks, so it's really hard to imagine Warlock losing three times. Mm -hmm. And that's... Uh, okay, our viewers don't know what this, uh, this is yet. Do you want to spoil them? <laughs> we'll see in a second. But I do want to mention that um, two out of the three qualified players made it through. The last one that didn't was the epic uh, series of games. I believe it was Col Colomone against Zele. Yeah. And that was just ridiculous. So, A lot of kudos to those players. They qualified and they are proving themselves. And right now, Nugori is on the verge of eliminating Forsen. Uh, he might go through as well as the third qualified players, player. So, uh, really impressive. Yeah. All right. Okay. So here we're just going for the face. Trying to just be annoying. So Freeze Mage for the third time for Forsen, just keeping the deck, uh, versus the Zoo. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, oh. That's actually pretty good versus Freeze Mage. That's uh, a lot of burst, and uh, those are the cards you need. What, what do you think about Forsen's hand? He has, uh, he got three, two free secrets, which is good, and he has Acolyte of Pain. He will not be able to play it next turn, because you want to or maybe if he feels like his hand is so bad, but you want, I feel like you want to draw more cards from Acolyte. You just don't want to play it into an empty board. Mm -hmm. But you need cards, you need card draw, so I can understand that. I was going for the one power overwhelm and uh, uh, her. void play. Her face? No, no face. <laughs> face is the place. All right, well now we have an eight, nine creature. That's fun to deal with. Good luck. So Forza has to deal with this and also draw cards. The end is oh, Doomsayer Frostbolt. Not bad. He deals with it and he actually deals with turn 5 as well. Flame of um, much. Okay. Imp Gang. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Kalimon had the option to drop the Void Caller to have more tempo on the following turn, but um, chooses not to. Generally, not do that. You keep the vo you're happy with the Void Callers because they are so good versus Flame Strike Blizzard, so you don't push it that early. But uh, you want to have them on board a bit. Mm -hmm. Well, that seemed like a really good start from the Warlock, but it was shut down by uh, by Force and Freezes and Doomsayers, and it seems like it doesn't really matter. Like. Uh, I think this is basically considered a stabilized situation for the Freeze Mage, and um, it's a pretty easy game from this point on, I think. I agree. Um, he has the draw, he has the tools, the, the board is not that threatening. So it seems like mm. Forsen got this one. But obviously, when like, I... weird stuff can happen still. Yeah. Got Argus. Imp Gangboss Argus. My for Argus. Lots of little dudes. He also tries to keep an egg uh, untouched, so that if there is any form of, of AoE, he will get a 4-4. That's pretty smart. Well, the only AoE that we see is the Flame Strike, and it definitely plays around that. Yeah, this whole board plays around Flame Strike. I'm not sure what that draw was, but uh, Forsen seems uh, to like it a lot. Oh, yes, of oh. course. I would love it. <laughs> All right, goes for the Ice Lance to try to make uh, unfavorable trades, um, the requirement from Nuguri. But he does have that second Power Whelm, which makes it a little bit more flexible. Yeah, at this point, oh my god, a Flame Imp is just terrible. Oh my god. A second of Wither, interesting. But it's not like he can do that much with it. I mean, he can get the power overwhelming and uh, set up a big void turn, but... It's so good! What about power overwhelming the Imp Gang boss? Okay, you kill Torison and then you and you eat it. Yeah, and yeah, you have 7 health. I would be impressed if not for the fact that Forsen is just steadily going into the Alexstrasza turn, into Antonidas. But it's certainly a 
a good combination here. Makes it 8 health, so it escapes Fireball. Forza still has an answer to it with a uh, spell damage Fireball Ping, which literally eats up his entire turn, which is terrible. But uh, yeah, I think Alistraza is pretty easy. Yep. Alistraza, boys. Yeah, 15 points to, to be dealt. There is no Morganis for now. No way to pop the block. The only good news for Nugori is that there is not enough burst yet. Okay, trying to apply some pressure. It seemed like he actually got close to popping the block, right? With the with this big Voiteur attacking. Yeah, it's not quite there though. Forcing got the freeze, and um, he has seven, eight points of damage. If he, no, he can't go through this with the flame strike. Maybe he can just draw here. Draw and Blizzard. Yeah. Draw and Blizzard seems alright. Well, you can push for 8 damage if you do Fireball Flame Strike. I feel like with the Flame Strike, you just. Uh... Pop the egg, pop the void caller. Oh no. Um Thorson Flame Strike. Oh it doesn't have frostbolt. Oh, never mind. Hey, what was thinking of frostbolt? This is probably the best. And uh there are no interesting minions for Nugori. He has to tap, that's eleven. This is lethal. Flame strike oh, dealing five. Um, the last point of damage on the last taunt would be dealt from the Tharson, and he has enough mana to fireball face in addition to the Alistraza attack. Yeah, that's true. It's pretty good lethal. Can Thorson spot lethal, or is he going to try to draw into another lethal? Well, the problem is, if there is a Mulganis, you basically spend a lot of resources to kill a Mul Mulganis, and if you no, draw into... If there's a Mulganis, you just fireball it. And you're still probably going to win. That's true, but you, if you draw into like a Frostbolt or Fireball, you can just win right away. Mm -hmm. Still, like Forsen is such a great position here. Yep. There is a nice block, there is a nice barrier, there is like Straza, and he has the Fireball to finish the game, so... <laughs> wow! Oh. Those are not demons though, the, the spiders. One of them is, and it's enough to drop Alistraza down. So he will have to fireball ping Morganis. Yep. <laughs> this is actually pretty funny. <laughs> Never lucky. But still, uh, in the situation there is yeah, no. Yeah, it just, it just stretches out the game. It doesn't actually change the, uh, 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 the winner. <laughs> Frostbolt is lethal, so... Forsen got this one at yep. least. Yep. Yeah. Forsen and the Freeze Mage, three tries, one win. But it might be good enough, it might be the start of a pretty sick comeback. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Nuguri is pinned on this Zulok. Uh, Forsen has a Hunter and his own Zulok. Uh, generally, those are matches that are not too one-sided, so Forsen is going to uh, probably need at the very least luck on his side to uh, continue on in this tournament. Yeah, I agree. But then again, he is not in a bad position. I think Hunter will have an edge versus Warlock. A small one, and it will depend on the draws a bit, but mm -hmm. it's an alright matchup for Forsen to take it. And then Warlock, Warlock, depends on what Warlock is he playing, but that may decide, so, decide the whole match. So Mage win was very important at this point. He's still in. He's checking his messages <laughs> from Forsen boys. Yeah, he's doing alright. Oh man, was was he using his HTC phone there? Hopefully. Hopefully. Alright, um, what what can we expect from the other decks? I think we're probably going to see Hybrid or Midrange Hunter. For the Warlock though, do you have any predictions? This seems to be a bit of a wild card. The Warlock class has been all over the place today. Forsen uh, was playing a lot of 
Demon Warlock, Zoo Demon Warlock uh, in tournaments in mm -hmm. the past. So he might actually go with the, the standard Zoo build again. Just have the demons and, uh, and the creatures. Well, the next match is going to be queued in uh, as a Warlock Mirror. Of course, we know Nugori's deck. And we're just about to get into the game here. Here we are. It is Zoo versus Zoo. Uh, usually, I feel going first is a pretty big deal here, but going second when you have four one drops is also pretty nice. Yeah, it's actually a massive with double flame up. Like a lot of Zoo builds actually play only one flame up because of, uh, because of Hunters. But here, Nogori plays, uh, not only plays two, he actually gets both of them in the opening hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, Void, Void Walker was, will stop this Abusive Surgeon. Oh, he plays the Sea Giant version. Oh. A Sea Giant is a big deal. Because it can be a card that not only works off of your deck, but your opponents as well. Especially in this matchup. Uh, also with Implosions. So it's interesting. It oh. Wow, for some good an Implosion. That might be really dangerous. Yeah, it would. And uh, right. I just yep. I just wanted to mention I just wanted to mention that um, Nugori uh, is playing. It seems like an older version on a different version. He plays the, those hunted creepers, probably no more coils and maybe even no bane of doom. We haven't seen one from him. All right. Well, the void caller is pretty good. It makes it so Sea Giant is currently not playable. There's no need to silence here because the, the Void Caller has no way of killing itself. Also, no demons for Horson at the moment. Yeah, there's something. Well, you might want to. Do you implosion here? Or do you just go for Flame and uh, Defender of Argus, kill one of the Void Walkers? Mm -hmm. Oh man. For implosion. Gets, gets the four it. and no demon. Uh, Horson's like, ah, not bad. That worked out well, <laughs> the smile. Oh, oh man. So what late to the party. Dodged. <laughs> Never yeah, lucky. Here, yeah, here I think you tap first. Because um, you're, you're going to do the owl and the sea giant. And that already puts the sea giant at one. You can actually make the sea giant cost zero by suiciding your haunted creeper. Yeah, but you still want to tap, right? First. Yeah. That's what you get. Seems like that was a mistake. Well, Sea Giant is not bad. Uh, but Forsen has double Argus, so. Yeah, it's gonna have... absorb a lot of those big hits. True. Just clear the board and get um, Sea Giant in a weird position. Actually, no, no, yeah. I won't. No, he just wants to push for some more damage right now, which I think is totally correct. Definitely. There is a Voiter not doing much. Hmm. Looks like Noguri might return the favor here. He gets a free, not bad. Um, he didn't go for the Void Caller, which means he, he wasn't really Whoa! Trusting. Dr. Boom, boys! On seven! Give me! <laughs> Uh, it is pretty good, but to clear the sea giant, you have to suicide your board, and then Doctor Boom into three imps is not the most attractive option. So I'm I will not be surprised to see the power of overwhelm tap uh, Argus play here. What do you think about implosion? Just uh, oh man, with this definitely implosion. Try to get it as much as possible. Ah, that's a two. But here is the the way. So with um, abusive. Just to yeah. Kill. By the way, um, if Nugori gets another Void Caller, that will be my favorite turn. <laughs> he, yeah, has he, has, he has played them aggressively. I don't think we'll see a passive play like we did from Zele earlier. Nope. Nope, indeed. But still, he can set up the taunts, uh, kill some demons. All right, so the minion trading continues. Seems like Forsen is ahead though because of Dr. Boom and uh, a better board. Yeah, Dr. Boom just puts him significantly ahead by itself. 
Nobody will definitely need the Void Caller. Um, without the Void Caller, Void Terror might use this. If he gets Power Overwhelming, then maybe. Mm. Well, there it is, but it's not really good enough by itself. He has to tap here. If he got the other Power Overwhelming. He hasn't played he hasn't played either yet. That's true. Can you possibly go for face? Yeah, I think he doesn't have a choice. This is 10, 12 points of damage. Uh, so at this point you just have to risk it. But you can't tap. You're dead to power overwhelming, but you're not dead to defend like a You're state. dead to the board if the boom bots uh, aren't kind. That's true. My experience is they're ruthless, so goodbye. <laughs> that Rio. one missed. Okay, okay. So 11 plus 2, that's 13 points. He needs to hit 3. I'd still go for it. Oh, it definitely. Nope. They're never lucky. <laughs> <laughs> A few comments there. Yeah. Still a pretty good position, because it's going to be so hard for Noguri to come up with the next 10 damage. Yeah, I think you even uh, turn up Dr. Boom here. Uh, he wants to protect it, but at this point, I don't think the zoo has uh, any good tool to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And with uh, Morganis, he's going to live one more turn. That's 5 points of damage. 9 mana for a 9-7 taunt doesn't seem that good. That's oh, like core that's hound it. level. Silence finishes the game. Yep. Force and evens it up. Nuguri is uh, probably feeling pretty crushed right now. Uh, he had a few missteps in the earlier parts of uh, his match against Forsen, but, well, he won those games. Forsen's actually favored to win now with this matchup. It's a small favor, but uh, Hunter versus Zu. Is in general a pretty good deck. Um, mm -hmm. just you raise, but uh, Hunter has better mechanisms to actually deal with the board. Um, Unleash the Hounds, possible explosive chop, maybe. Knife Juggler is also pretty good there. I feel like um, because we're seeing like the Void Terror version with like the big dudes, uh, the explosive starts, and the double uh, Argus, that if Forsen is playing uh, a more aggressive or a face Hunter, uh, he's actually not that likely to win at all. Well, we're going to see uh, what he's going to play, but I would assume, as you assumed in the very beginning, that he is running the mid-range. A lot of uh, previous players did, did, did play mid-range. Mm -hmm. Only Nukori was, I think, the only face hunter we've seen. Or hybrids. But the other the, the other players were running double hunt master. Well, even Nukori was running high main, so yeah. Them hybrids. All right, well, uh, Juggler, Double Scientist, and Houndmaster leads us to believe that it is uh, a mid-range-ish. Oh, there's the boom. All right. No beasts, though. But Juggler turn one is, uh, is going to contest the one free, which is pretty good. And Nogori can't really deal with this. Just need to attack face. Double Med Scientist might be important with the secrets. But we don't know exactly what Forsen's, what secret is is running. Alright, Forsen gets the good juggle there. Of course, juggling to that minion is going to be completely irrelevant. This juggle oh. goes to the juggler, I think you might go face here. Yeah, I think you do go face. You, you don't want to face the, the traps, the secrets. What do you think about this positioning? It feels a bit weird. Um, like, would you ever really want to taunt the juggler? Because that's what this would lead with the Argus, if you play the juggler in the middle. I actually lost you for a minute, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, the positioning on Nugori's board with the juggler in the middle would indicate that he would rather taunt the juggler. But does, does that seem to be what you actually want? Uh, I think you don't want that. Might have been a, a small misplay there, you just um, should have the spider in the middle. Or maybe the void walker in the middle. I feel also, like some... oh. snake. Oh, snake trap. From That's kind of bad. Because now the next one might be freeze. Well, is usually going to be freeze. 
Oh, what? The, another snake trap? Oh, there was no trap. Well, Forsen, really? Forsen drew the freeze and he's only running one of each. Wow, that's interesting. But at least he got the beasts here. Yeah, but I feel that's kind of a big setback. Like, suddenly Forsen's dream hand ended up not so dreamy at all. Oh man, look at that Void Terror. Yeah. I think I'd leave the 1-1 one, one available. I think I would not sacrifice that. Against a Hunter, it is useful. Well, Niguri decides otherwise. Will 4 attack actually matter against Hunter? I don't think so. But then uh, a 1-1 one, one is an extra dog. Hmm. Oh, I like this. Let's let's get a reuse on that Void Terror. Oh my god! <laughs> well, he actually can reuse it now with the power. That's ridiculous. Yeah, those are some pretty good draws. So you deal 8 and then you get... a what? <laughs> Look at Forsen's face. It's like... Wow. What is the power? Incoming Doomguard top deck guaranteed. Am I right? Yeah, it's always a Doom Guard. Always a Doom Guard. You can tap into it as well. Just wow. Like... We just saw Forsen get completely crushed in that turn. You can't deal with the 11 11. Like, even if there is no Doom Guard, Nagori has so much time to deal with that. After the silence being used. Yeah, he's at 27. <laughs> yeah. He has all the time in the world. Well, th those are kind of like blanks, but 11 11 is just staying there. Yeah. Forsen needs a hun Hunter's Mark or a Hunmaster, a Misha, Hafer. Leon yeah, Misha, is Misha works. Misha works. Oh, he got Misha. He got Misha, okay. Now he has to attack into the free four, I believe. He has to play the control game? Because Warlock doesn't have the, um, the burst spells. No, he doesn't attack in a three four because he's screwed. He has to go face and pray for a kill command top deck. Okay, that would be eight points of damage. Play Haunted Creeper. So. Yep. All right, I don't hate that play. It's just you try to play the control game, and um, you just want one minion on board so that any kind of buff doesn't kill you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is! Okay, oh there's my Doomguard. god. Ah, oh, crap. Well, Dan, down goes the returning champion. But he played Sorry, Forsen boys. He, yeah, he played great. In fact, it was uh, Nuguri that made uh, most of the uh, missteps earlier on. Uh, but it was in games that he won, so he wasn't really punished for it. But uh, overall, just a really crazy sequence of games there. Uh, Forsen looks really sad right now. He, he had a good matchup with Rob. Sad but... boys. Yeah. Well, at least he didn't go 0 4. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, solid 2 3. We see our bracket right now. Yeah, so... we see our day two matchups. Uh, we will be starting up tomorrow around the same time, which is eight hours ago tomorrow. So it's 16 hours from now. We'll have. Uh, Bunny Muffin versus Trump, Asahida versus Dog, Gara versus Zele, Lothar versus Nugori, and by the end of the day, we will have crowned the HTC Recharged Champion. Pretty good stuff. Oh man, that was really exciting. We have we have three qualified players: Bunny Muffin, Asahida, and Nugori actually go forward, and we have I think one HTC player, um, HTC sponsor player who advanced. Trump. That's Trump. And we root for Trump. Yeah, of course we root for Trump. Bailey. <laughs> okay. Of course. Uh, all right, guys. Well, that's going to be it from us. I hope you guys enjoy the show. We will be back tomorrow, as I mentioned. Um, in the meantime, uh, if you guys do want to check out the VODs, you guys are welcome to if you uh, missed uh, any of the stuff from earlier. Um, and again, thank you for uh, HTC sponsoring the tournament. And if you guys do want to check out the offer they have uh, given out to you guys, uh, they're doing 50 bucks off all their phones, and you guys can check out that offer and all their products in the description below. For now, though, that's going to be it. Again, hope you guys had fun watching tonight. Uh, it's been great casting you the Nimsh. And uh, Likewise, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we'll put as good of an effort tomorrow. Any last thoughts? Well, I really enjoyed day one, and I'm excited for day two. So 
as you said, a pleasure. And let's go to sleep, man. <laughs> we have a long day tomorrow. A lot of casting. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow.